Hey everyone, Ronaldo Wafferman here, showing you another awesome CompuShow tip. Today we're going to be talking about building your own easy remote. And I'm going to give you kind of the basics of it, but once you play around with it a little bit, you'll really be able to get a full grasp of what you can do with this and how powerful this is. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, of course, is we're going to look at your console screen. And you can open up your own show, you can create a new show to test it out with, whatever you prefer. You'll see I've already made one. Uh, you can, I can also load the MIDI con if I wanted to. Uh, but first we're going to create one from scratch. Uh, we're going to click on external windows, then we're going to click on console editor. This is going to open up a secondary program that is part of the CompuShow suite. And here we have console editor. Now you can go ahead and start from one of the pre-made ones if you would like. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and create one from scratch. I'm just going to go through a very basic walkthrough. So of course we have our XY grid. You can design it however you'd like. And I can make it bigger or I can make it smaller. And of course you can preview it right underneath. Now you can also load in your own image. So if you would like to brand this with your logo, you can certainly do that. But it's very simple. First you can start by doing buttons, right? So we can have a button here. So I'm just going to double click. And it usually, again, it takes a second, uh, especially in parallels. So if you're using parallels, it's going to lock up on you for a second. But you're going to see the buttons here. It's going to show you the button in inactive and in its active state. So you can choose whichever one you would like. So let's say just for craps and giggles, we're going to go with a large button. right? Uh, you can choose your horizontal or vertical sliders. And you're going to notice there's plenty to choose from in different ones. So you can have just a typical large one here. You can have one that actually looks like a fader. You can have an APC type slider, uh, old school wooden one. I mean, there's so many different options, right? I personally like the large ones because I like using this with the iPad or iPhone. So I want something that's easy to control. You can have, again, horizontal, vertical. It doesn't matter, right? You can have rotary sliders, wheels, color wheels, pan and tilt. Let's just go ahead and add a color wheel just for craps and giggles, right? So we have one here, and we're gonna click there, and we're gonna move it here. Maybe I wanna make it a little bit smaller, maybe larger, doesn't matter. Now, this of course allows me to add a page, you know, basically up and down button, so it can be for pages or whatnot. And you'll notice that a couple of these come from the Korg Nano, or the Midicon, or it says Tractor, oh, the F1, I guess. Uh, you can also do a group of buttons. There's a whole different options you can do. You can also do text. Uh, basically, what I do is I just add a text window here. I'm going to add a text window here. We're good to go there. We're going to go ahead and save that. We're going to create new. We're going to save this as just test console. We're going to click OK. That's pretty simple. And again, you can make this as large or small as you want. Uh, there's also some other options here you can play with. Uh, you really don't need to mess with it too much. I mean, you can change the color of the text properties and everything else. But I'm actually going to change the text properties from the console itself. So let's go ahead and close that for a second. Now we need to add the console into the system. You'll already see that I've made a basic one that basically turns the DMX on and off, has uh, faders for the master, flood, scanners, barrels, uh, which are the acrobats, EFXs, the inner rolls, that sort of like. I'm just going to go ahead and go to this one here, right click, and we're going to choose new. It says right click here to add a console to this preset. So we're going to right click, do console, and we're going to do our test. It's pretty exciting. You'll already see that we have some options. So let's say, for example, we want the this button here to activate our color mix, right? So literally, I'm going to right click on my color mix all, and I'm going to click on select or excuse me, button activation rather. Click on the console window. And I'm going to click. Now you'll notice that I can activate it with that. Pretty simple. Okay. Now we right click on the color wheel. We're going to choose on the general tab up here where it pops up. Click on the little star, click others, and then color mixing control command. Now this will allow me to either A, choose the selected page, or I can choose uh, the selected button, but I want to choose something very generic. You can even also control 
a general group as well. So if you create a group, you can control all the lights within that group. So this actually gives you a few extra options that you don't normally see in the other buttons. But I'm going to go ahead and unselect it because I already know what I want. I want the master and I want it to be the master color. I'm color mixing all. So we're just going to click OK. Next we have the little dimmer which is built in right here. So I'm going to take that dimmer all the way up. And then of course I can move it around. And you'll see that it's pretty much an instantaneous response. As it should be. Pretty simple there. Of course I can deactivate it. And even though I can still move it, it's not going to control the actual output until I activate that particular switch. So we've done that. Pretty simple. Now, of course, this one here, maybe I want to take it to a, um, let's say, for example, I want to make it to control a strobe. And when I, you know, move this up, it'll activate it. When I move it down, it'll deactivate it. But at the same time, it's going to affect the speed. So how do we do that? First, we're going to do on the flood strobe that I've already made here. And this basically makes all my flood strobe. I'm going to right click on that. We're going to link to console for the button activation. We want it to activate the button. We're going to click. Bam. Okay, so we'll see it right here. It says button activation. I'm going to go and click on that. And basically, I'm going to tell it that I want it on and then off. But I want it pretty much, I want to say right here. And let's see. When I move it up, it goes up here. When I move it down, it goes there. You'll notice that there. Up, on, down, off. But it doesn't control the speed yet. So now I'm going to right click on this wheel. We're going to do the dimmer because that's actually the dimmer wheel because the dimmer will control the strobe. Click on console. Then we go here. And you'll notice it activates the strobe. Deactivate strobe. Activate, deactivate. Okay? Awesome. Now we have that saved. Now I'm going to right click here and we're going to rename it. Okay? Very simple. Let's go ahead and now load the Easy Remote app on the iPad or iPhone or Android and show you what goes from there. Before we do that, make sure your computer is online. It doesn't have to be online on the internet but it does need to be on either an ad hoc network or it needs to be on a wireless network. Now ad hoc works pretty well, but in my experience, some of the phones tend to lose connection with ad hoc uh, recently. Um, by recently, I mean the newer iOS 7. I know some of the newer Android operating systems don't want to seem to latch on permanently to an ad hoc connection. You can buy a small portable router in Walmart or Newegg, Amazon, whatever, and carry that with you. That's going to give you a much better, more solid connection. I usually recommend that. Let's go ahead and load up the app, show you what's going to happen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up the Easy Remote app. You're going to see the Compu Show will automatically load. Just click on that. Now, this is right now showing me my other console that I made. I'm just going to click on the little unlock button and move on to the next. I'm just going to go ahead and unlock it. Let's go ahead and turn it on. As I move it around, it goes to blue, green, red whichever color there. I can also dim it up and down there. Now this looks slightly different on the remote than it did on the console and this is just because there's a new GUI update which is much better because you have a physical or visual interpretation of how dim it's going to be. So you got a built-in dimmer there which is really nice. And then of course we have our strobe that we made and again, as soon as I turn it on, it's going to not only turn it on, but it's going to increase, increase or decrease the strobe. Now, of course, this was a scene that I had already made, which is very easy to set with the min max options. So again, that's it. Now, of course, you can make as many of these as you want. I can go over here and turn my DMX on or off. Uh, my master slider is missing on here only because I need to update it in the... Uh, console because I actually used an old slider, but I can turn them up and down here. 
So, you know, of course, I turn these all the way on. Make sure DMX is enabled. Click on to the next. Let's say you're using a MIDI con. You can load the MIDI con up as well. See it on your iPad and literally have a virtual MIDI con. This is great for events where you want the MIDI con but you don't want to bring it out because maybe there's only a couple of lights. Have a virtual MIDI con. It's also a great training tool for your employees too. So again, this is the Easy Remote. It is a free app available on the iOS store for the iPad or the iPhone, and it's also available on Android as well. Again, Arnaldo Offerman, Compu Show lessons or any questions that you guys want, make sure to request them on the page. Thank you so much. Good night and God bless.